Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Island Girl Shan, and I have finally taken the exit predictor, you guys. Woo. Now, to say the least, that exam was a lot. But in true form, you know I'm coming to give you the tea so you can focus on your studying and increase your chances of passing when you finally take it. Before I jump into anything, I want to say a big congratulations to everyone who have taken their ATI exit exam so far and passed. Shout out to you. Good job, because I know it was not easy. It definitely wasn't easy for me. So, y'all might want to pull up a chair, grab a pen and a notepad, make yourself comfortable, because I'm going to try and give you as much information as possible possible about what to expect on this exam. Um, I scored in the 99 percentile um, and my overall grade was at 89.3, which I, I guess is a good grade. Um, so you needed a what? 72 to pass, which would be, which would rank you in the 92nd percentile. So I think I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Um, before I jump into any information, I do want to go over uh, the exam itself. It's 180 questions, only 150 of them count. So 30 of the questions are dummy questions. Don't ask me why ATI wants to torture us, but that's the route that they decide to take. Um, you get three hours, which rounds out to be a minute per question in true ATI form. Um, what else? I don't know. That's that's pretty much it. All right. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Before I start going over a particular topic and subject areas that you guys want to focus on, I'm going to give you guys a huge, huge advice that big hint here. If you have not taken practice A um, or pra practice B, the comprehensive practice A and practice B, when you are taking it, pull out a notepad and write down the stuff that you're missing. Because I'm not going to kid you, I saw like a good amount of questions from practice A and practice B on there. If they weren't the same questions, they were pretty similar. So I would grab a notepad, that's what I did. I grabbed the notepad while I was taking it and if I was missing, um, questions in a particular um, subject area, I would jot down a note. And then when I was done, not only did I do my remediations, but I also made a point to go back and review each area that I was missing. Not I highly recommend that. Pay attention to practice A and practice B. I'm telling you, I am telling you, I saw a lot of those questions and if they weren't the exact same questions they were very very similar also brush up on your fundamentals because a lot of other questions were focused on fundamentals i mean knowing the basics um hygiene hand hygiene infection control fire safety uh, basic body mechanics, you know, knowing how when, when you're taking care of a patient, the importance of raising the bed to waist, you know, height to make sure you're preserving your back, stuff like ergo, ergonomics, as they call it. Know those because they came up, all, I want to say majority of this exam was just like fundamentals, like the basic fundamental stuff infection control hand hygiene hand hygiene hand hygiene i cannot stress that enough because there were questions that were like you would think they were super simple but it's like dang this is fundamentals like 101 so please that is the subject area all right so let me jump into specific topics that i saw that were a recurring theme on the particular exam. So first things first, you want pharmacology. You want to know if a patient takes drugs, what what how does allergic reactions manifest? Um therapeutic communication. 
um, when the patient is combative? How do you, how would you talk to a patient who is combative? Um, also, how would you convince a patient or talk to a patient, not necessarily convince, but how would you talk to a patient who is refer, um, refusing important medications? Obviously, you can't force the patient. There is no such, you cannot force the patient, but, you know, maybe provide the patient with information as to why this medication is important or why this medication will help them and help their situation. So think about therapeutic communication. Never ask the patient why. Always ask open-ended questions. Reflection. So if a patient says to you, you know, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know what I am doing. You know, I, I just, I just feel like, you know, everything is out of control. Um, a good way to like reflect or repeat back what the patient said is like what I'm hearing you're saying is that you know you feel overwhelmed right now with everything that you have going on that's commu therapeutic communication so keep those in mind review those um know the complications of electroconvulsive therapy which is um mental health so if a patient is going in for a electroconvulsive therapy if electricity is being put in the body what what could be a possible complication of that okay so think about that um know your lab values y'all i done preach this i done preach this i done preach this i done preach this know your lab values because i'm telling you i have came across there was like 15 or 20 questions that involve lab values that I picked out the answer before I even read the question because I could pick out which lab value was out of range. So know your lab value, electrolytes, your lab, know your lab values. It will take a whole lot of pressure off. I'm telling you, when you come across those questions, if you can quickly pick out, okay, well, if the potassium is normal, um, if the sodium is normal, if the chloride is normal, okay, well, the white blood cell is the only one that's out of range, the ones that's high. Know your lab values. Um, let's see. Uh, and by the way, I have a notepad. So if you see me looking down, that's where I'm looking at. I was trying to write down notes so I don't forget this stuff. So I give you guys as much information as I possibly can. Um, know how to commute, um, care for a patient on, on, on mechanical and ventilation. Can't talk. On mechanical ventilation. So know how to care for. So if it comes to suctioning, know what to look for, know how suctioning is effective, um, how to prevent um, pneumonia, uh, ventilation associated pneumonia, you know, know how to care for a patient who is on mechanical ventilation. Also, no signs and symptoms. If you're weaning a patient off of a mechanical ventilation, what would stop you? What's what's a sign or a symptom that will possibly stop you from, you know, weaning the patient off? And weaning means, you know, you're taking the patient off of the, the um, mechanical ventilation. So what would you be looking for that would indicate that this patient is not, or uh, this patient is in respiratory distress and maybe needs to stay on? Um... How to assess patients with renal disorder. So what to look for? Remember what the, 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 the renals, the kidneys, what do they do? What are they responsible for? You know, keep that in mind. Um, let's see. Know the ethical principles, autonomy, beneficence, fidelity. Know all of those and know what they mean. Know the difference between um, different personality disorders and their manifestation. Um, so borderline personality, they cling to people. Um, Antisocial, they'll be combative. They'll do stuff that you, you know, my people might find to be, you know, distasteful. So know how they manifest. No drug, um, drug, drug interaction. No, the like, no, what drugs you would not give with other drugs. Um, and I put from my example what you do not mix with anticoagulants, like, do not mix, you know, anticoagulants with, um, medication that causes bleeding or bleeding disorders that, you know, medication that could cause an ulcer. So, know those. Um, also know when, um, anti um, anticoagulants or other medications will be contraindicated. Okay. Um, let's see what else. 
know the cardiovascular system there is no way around it know the disorders and manifestations also the dysrhythmic disorders know how they manifest um know when you um use a cardio conversion as a as opposed to defibrillation and also what medications you would use for certain dysrhythmic disorders okay like adenosine i think you use it for supraventricular um tachycardia know those um therapeutic care for maternity um if a patient had a miscarriage patient had a stillborn how would you um give therapeutic care for that patient um no burns manifestations of complications for burns how would you care for a patient how to reduce infection for burns and once again that plays back into the fundamentals the basics okay infection control starts with the basics so you need to know what precautions to implement hand hygiene which is the biggest way to prevent infection um had caring for patients with alzheimer's um or dementia um how to help caregivers at home caregivers how to you know provide support for them to prevent burnouts um know about anti and antipartum and postpartum care and what to monitor for in both stages um how proper care for patients after a hip surgery um, I did say proper body mechanics, or maybe I didn't, but proper body mechanics, um, how to properly care for a patient with a chest tube, when you would be giving a patient a chest tube, you know, what to look for with a chest tube, what is expected and what is not expected with a chest tube. Um, patients who have um, diabetes, contraindications for as far as foot care is concerned. You know, think about they have um loss of sensation in their foot so you want to make sure that you're teaching the patient you know avoid extremely hot water cold and stuff like that all uh, right <clears throat> okay no shock the different types of shock whether a cardiogenic hypovolemic how they manifest how they're treated um and what what how especially manifestations um let's see no insulin the names what they're used for so you know if it's um as part you know that's the rapid acting regular insulin um is you know was it short onset um and that's the only one that you could be given via iv how you would draw up and mix insulin big hint right there um, and then, you know, names of the long acting insulin, know your insulin, know their time, their peaks, their troughs, when you would give medicate, um, food, not medication, but food with those, um, know how to triage your patient. So what patient, if you got these patients, which one you would see first, always look at the one who is at risk of losing life or limb always that is always the patient you want to see first um and of course no blood no the blood transfusion um and that's pretty much it most of the questions are based off of fundamentals like i said before so brush up on your fundamentals the pink book is a great resource because that's what i read i read that from cover to cover um take the practice a and practice b seriously don't just take them and be like eh. pay attention because there is a lot of helpful questions and information in those so take your time and take it you get eight hours you can stop it and go back and take your time like i said take notes if you're missing a question write the question out write the logic out and go back and review those questions because those were a huge help and that's pretty much it. I know this video is really long and I apologize for that, but it's a lot of information and I want you guys to do well. Um, like I always said before, you know, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you don't wanna leave a comment down below, a couple of you guys have hit me up in my DMs 
on Instagram and y'all already know I'm quick to respond. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I possibly can. So feel free to reach out to me um, and, and I'll share any hints, tips, tricks. If you are looking for study tricks, I have two other videos that talk about how I actually study, like my study strategy and I'll try to link them down below. Um, that's pretty much it. Next step is graduation and then the NCLEX. Um, and I've started my little review for the NCLEX. I'm trying to, you know, stay on top of everything. But that's it. I wish you the best of luck and all the success. Until next time. Bye.